Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Welcome once more to another video podcast of PNT Live, here exclusively from the PNT Live Network. I am your hostess, Alexandra Mayers. This week, AVN, the Adult Video News Media Network, put out a statement in regards to their supposed support for the Black Lives Matters movement. I'm here to tell you that in my opinion, I think that they are full of shit. You see, AVN has a history of habitually and consistently engaging in what, from my perspective, has been nothing but racist practices and racist actions. I want all of you to take a good look at the following tweet from adult industry veteran, Mr. Marcus. Considering the experience with AVN, this is reactionary tactics and misguided. Tried to talk to them years ago about this and was dismissed. The entire AVN staff will undergo racial sensitivity training. Yeah, I want to see it. In the following interview that I'm going to share with all of you, which was conducted by another adult industry veteran known as Melissa Hill, a woman who, not too unlike Mr. Marcus, has been given the shaft by the adult entertainment industry as well, quite possibly due to this particular interview. In fact, I even wonder if Melissa lost her LA Talk radio gig specifically due to elements discussed in this interview. But this particular interview, as I said before, was conducted by Melissa Hill, and the interview features Mr. Marcus along with another African-American male performer known as Shawn Michaels, who appears to have felt pressured to resign from his post as president of the Adult Performers Actors Guild Union. In this interview, both Mr. Marcus and Shawn Michaels allege that they experienced an instance of extreme racism at the hands of AVN employees at an AVN event. This situation has not been talked about much. Not many people have even heard this entire interview, but I'm putting it out there today because it's imperative, especially in these times, that African American talent, talent of color, not only within the adult entertainment industry, but people of color within the United States, all over the world, realize the type of racism that adult entertainers have had to endure, had to face over the years. So many have felt that they have not had a voice. There have been voices that have spoken up about these kinds of situations. Myself, for example. But whenever anyone speaks up, they are demonized, blacklisted, and their peers are intimidated to such a degree that they're afraid to even communicate with individuals who do exercise their voice to speak out in regards to the injustices and the racism within the adult entertainment industry. Now, I do want to also add that Tasha Rain is mentioned throughout this interview, which is ironic considering some of her recent tweets that are supposedly in support of Black Lives Matter, and an individual who, from my perspective, there is no doubt that he practices racism due to his communication and his friendly affiliation with known white supremacists. It features a man known as Peter Warren of AVN. Why AVN? continues to work with Peter Warren, I don't know, but considering that it seems that they are not willing to let him go, I have no choice but to look at that statement that I mentioned earlier from AVN as not only being disingenuous, but just being nothing but a piece of um, shit. So now I'm gonna go ahead and roll the interview, and again, as I do, I will interject with my commentary. Right. What we have to do today, which is the current incident, that happened to you at last year's AVN, and I want I want you to go ahead and elaborate on that. Well, I mean, I, I went down to you know, AVN nominations. I've been at every AVN for the past 24 years, and you know now they do these AVN nomination parties within the last I don't know five six years. 
uh, maybe even longer than that. All right, so let's pause right now. It's important that everyone does realize how long Mr. Marcus has been in the business. For the most part, he has had a stellar career, a near perfect career, with the exception of one incident involving an STD. Let's continue. So I went to one in 2017, and you know, I'm always uneasy at these things since that incident, because you know, I don't know who's friend or foe. Uh, when I see a friend, I'm happy, I light up, I'm, it's good to see, you know, fellow performers uh, but then you know your foes are a little more secretive and hidden all right let's pause right there I really hope at this stage mr. Marcus realizes that an individual known as Sean Tompkins aka TRPWL is not his friend Marcus if you ever see this Tompkins is a white supremacist he is a racist. It does not matter that he has multiracial children. All you gotta do is look at his timeline. And over the years, I have seen you buddy buddy up to that guy like a damn fool. So if you haven't waken up yet, wake up now. So I saw Tasha Rain walking through the event with the AVN crew following behind her. And I thought, that'll be a perfect way to break the ice. I'll just do some on-air camera. I do a lot of on-air camera. I've taken pictures and videos for AVN these past 24 years. They got a, an archive, I guarantee you, of... Let's pause right there. Again, I want to remind everybody, Mr. Marcus has been in the industry far longer than Tasha Rain has. Yet and still, as we continue, you're gonna see how the industry treated Mr. Marcus versus Tasha Ray. And I saw her and I thought, okay, this would be good. So I reached out to get her attention. And it wasn't even a split second. She just kind of moved away from me. And initially I was offended because I was like, um, I feel like, do I have like, like, is my skin bother you or something? I, I just immediately thought it was a race thing because she did not, she moved so quickly as if, don't touch me. And I, I, I kind of felt, I felt embarrassed a little bit because I was like, oh, because I was there with a friend. So I just kind of sat back in my chair. I, was, I didn't even get up. I had reached out to, to try to get her attention. She was walking past me. And when, when that didn't happen, I just said, oh, well. What, what was it that you were oh, trying well. to tap? Her hand or uh, her waist? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, was re I was reaching for her hand. That's exactly what, you know. When I walk into these events, I'm, I, I, I'm fully aware of my environment. I, I observe everything. Um, when I'm walking down the street or when I'm driving in my car, people approach me all the time. Hey, Mr. Marcus. Hey, Mr. Marcus. I'm in the grocery store. I, you know, open my shoulder, um, you know, up and if they're ahead of me, I observe. If they're, if they're staring at me, if they want to, if they want to, if they recognize me, that's just, that's just who I am. You know, it's been a long time. I've been doing this for a long time. So I, I kind of got my feels out for things, right? So I'm thinking that this was like, this was going to be a good thing. I thought, perfect. I can talk to her, get on camera. Because I, I had never talked to Tasha in my life. But I knew AVN. So I thought, that's my end. And when she like kind of dismissed me, I was just kind of like, okay. That's happened before. I can, I, you know, I, I was already apprehensive when I got there. So I figured that's just, that's fine. I know better. I know, just grab a drink. It'll be fine. You'll see a face you're familiar with. Just keep moving, right? Not even two minutes later, the security comes over and asks me to leave. And I'm like, for what? And they say, and I look over and I see Tasha surrounded by, you know, some of the avian staff. And she's looking hysterical, and I'm like, I I walk over to her because I'm thinking I can I can I can straighten this out. And as soon as I walk over, security stands in front and says, "Nope, we gotta leave." And I'm like, "What's going on?" He said, "Well, she's done sexually or inappropriate something." I, I don't even remember. I just remember looking at her like, "No, that's not true. That is not what happened." All right, let's pause there. So what Mr. Marcus is alleging 
in this particular interview, which is essentially a testimony, is that he attempted to get Tasha Rain's attention, and in response, Tasha Rain essentially prompted psychological security brutality upon Mr. Marcus. And it's important to note that Tasha Rain, for quite some time after this incident, did make several allegations on Twitter in regards to feeling assaulted by Mr. Marcus in public at this particular event. All right, let's go ahead and continue. Why? And I asked her, I said, why are you doing this? And then they didn't stab Mr. Marcus got to leave. And so I, 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 I'm, I'm so, I'm been around a long time. And I've been in uncomfortable situations, and I'm almost comfortable being uncomfortable. So I decide, all right, I'm just leave. Let's pause there. Just because I think that's a very important quote, because I'm sure many of you out there who are watching me that are people of color have felt exactly like how Mr. Marcus just shared how he felt. He's almost comfortable feeling uncomfortable. That is something that very few people who are enabled by white privilege could ever understand. Feeling comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. Not good. Not good. I just turn and it's a downstairs, upstairs uh, venue. So I just, I just kind of, I felt embarrassed. I felt rejected. I felt like excluded. I felt immediately, you know, no one wanted to hear my side of the story. No one wanted to look into it further. The decision was made and there was no um, changing that. I can feel uh, okay, that. Mark, I Mark, that. I, Mark, I, just wanna, I, I wanna just back you up on one thing. So witnesses around, there was cameras all over. This is a public uh, uh, venue. Who was with you? Was Shawn Michaels with you? No, Shawn so, so wasn't wasn't with me at the time I, I had brought a friend of mine um you know he was a civilian and when i asked him to like to, you know did you see what happened he was like nope i didn't so I, I i really felt alone to be honest with you he ended up staying by the way you know he didn't even leave i ended up just, i remember know, i saw you getting, i saw you getting escorted yeah, out I, and it was terrible i just want okay, to we're, 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 we're trying to get to the situation where they blamed uh, Shawn Michaels and you stepped up. So Shawn Michaels. Well, see, and this was so this happened. This happened in November. And just to interject, I believe that this happened November of 2017. Also, the other voice that you hear in this interview, um, I do not know that individual's name, but he seemed to have been a legal expert. Also, as we go further into this video piece, you are going to hear a voice of a witness as well. And I left the venue, and I didn't question it. I, next day, she's tweeting about it. Um, I didn't respond. I just, I, I just figured it'd go away. Come January, which was not even a month and a half later, we're going to Las Vegas. I spent the whole week getting everything arranged. I, I bought a table. I bought passes for uh, the convention. I was in and out of Avian's uh, makeshift office by the Hard Rock. All right, and let's pause right there. There has been a rumor that one of the individuals who was at least spending some time in the AVN makeshift office was an individual known as Michael Fatorosi. Michael Fatorosi is not a part of this particular interview, but I do want to warn talent of color not to trust him, especially if you are a male talent of color. Michael Fatorosi seems to have a problem, especially when it comes to black men. A problem that goes back many years to before he entered a relationship with his current girlfriend or wife, Vanessa Blue. Vanessa Blue used to be in a relationship with an individual known as Lexington Steele, another black male adult actor. 
Michael Fatterosi, from my perspective, encouraged and enabled Vanessa Blue to drag Lexington Steele's name through the mud for years. I will not say that Michael Fatterosi has much of a problem with black females, at least ones that he can control. But black males, trust me when I say, avoid that man. All right, I'm going to continue. Looking forward to AVN. I had a room at the Hard Rock. So I got my suit. I got a black suit on. I, I get downstairs. I meet up with Shawn Michaels. I meet up with Julian St. Jacques. These are guys I've known for 20 plus years. We're all going to walk in together. And we walk the long red carpet into the actual the photo area and then the media room, which was separated from everything else. As we walk in there, I walk in there with Peter Nord, Mandingo, um, and like two other performers. So now we're a large group of, of, of men and talking and taking pictures of each other. And I get out on the media carpet and I kind of get ahead of everybody and start, and I see Vivid and I walk over to Vivid. They're doing media. I talk to them. And then I believe it was an Asian uh, uh, media uh, company there. I talk to them. And as I turn, to see who else I can talk to, I see Tasha standing there. And I immediately have flashbacks of of the nomination party and all the little mess that she created. And I thought, okay, you better just go back and hang with your boys. And I turned away and walked back and got, got back with the group, which was only a few feet away. They were only a few feet away. So now I'm walking with them. I'm feeling safety in numbers. I off in the distance, and like I said, I have, I'm observing everything. And so I see Tasha talking with um, her friend, the camera guy. That was the, the camera guy from the AVN nomination party. I see him, and I see her talking. And so I decide to try to try to get ahead of this whatever mess she was about to create. And I go, I find the AVN staff, one of the same people that I was talking to all week long about my table and passes. I see her and I say, if, if she says anything and I point to Tasha, I, it is not true, I did not do anything. She caused a problem last time and I'm worried that she's gonna do it again. Uh, the immediate response was, Marcus, we don't have time for this. I have to show the run, I, I gotta go. She walked away from me. So I said, okay, you know, just get into the venue. I had my passes, get into the venue. The group of us walk into the venue we're standing there because they gave us drink tickets and we were going to walk over to the bar and get some drinks. But before that could happen, security came over and grabbed Sean and told him that he was not welcome into the event. Now, I'm putting two and two together and they start describing, you know, into their microphone, into their uh, walkie-talkies. He, he's wearing all black, right? Because me and Sean were both wearing all black suits. The only difference was Sean had on a black glove. And so... I asked him, I said, I think, are you, I think you guys are talking to the wrong person. I think you guys mean me. Ask him, ask him if he was wearing gloves. And so they get on the mic and says, is the person that we were supposed to escort wearing gloves? And they were like, no. I said, then it's me. It's me you're looking for. And so they confirm through their mics or their walkie talkies, oh yeah, it's Marcus. And they asked me to leave the venue that I had. Now let's pause there, okay? Because here is the question. Was it really mistaken identity? Or was there somebody with a white supremacist agenda who had the intention of sending a message to not just one, but two veteran black male talents that they may not be welcome when it comes to the future of the adult entertainment industry in America, at least in regards to where AVN is concerned. Just a thought, just a thought, but let's continue. Assaulted or unwanted something, Tasha Rain again. And I was just kind of like, okay, here we go again. Sean, the look on Sean's face was confusion. Everybody's face was like confusion. Like, what is going on? And I, and I said, I'm sorry, guys. This is 
this is a continuation of something that happened back in November, back at the event. And I, I would explain, but security was like, you got to leave. So I said, I'm sorry, I apologize. And I walked out. So let's pause again. So keep in mind, Mr. Marcus did not do anything at this event. He had already apologized. And from my perspective, um, it wasn't even really necessary that he apologized when it came to that incident involving the STD. And, but that's a whole nother podcast, okay? But the point is that this is a man who's a veteran in the industry who all these years has played the goddamn game. But it's not good enough for a certain group with a certain racist agenda within the adult entertainment industry, okay? Because that's what this is about. And one more thing, there is a Caucasian male talent, actually several, but one in particular known as James Dean, who has been accused by multiple parties of being sexually aggressive, of essentially rape, but he's welcome at the events. There's a Caucasian individual known as Lucas Frost, who basically weaponized a sexual act against a young woman known as Bella Rose on set. Is he still welcome at the AVN events? I I mean, I'm not even sure if to this day, Mr. Marcus is banned or not when it comes to AVN events. Someone who's watching this, ask him. Ask the AVN um, staff. What's, what's the guy who owns its name now? Tony Rios? Ask him. And they escorted me to my room, had me pack up all my stuff. And um, they, they allowed me to stay there and have a drink because I had a bottle of vodka in there. So, no, a bottle of gin. And I had some people follow me up to the room because they were concerned. And we had a few shots. I packed my stuff and I left the hotel. And that was okay, that. Okay, I want to, I want to, I want to, I never spoke up about okay. it. All right, uh, Marcus, I want to know. So, at first, it was mistaken identity. They had picked Shawn Michaels. Uh, and, and you are 5'10. Shawn Michaels is what, 6'3? Yeah, Sean, five three. Thank you for being generous, man. I'm five eight, actually. Right, uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So you're you're five get, eight. There's a big Sean difference six. between our heights, and a big difference in description. Other than right. you were wearing black suit, and other than you're exactly. both African American. Black. Um, right. Okay. So so did, did did anyone bother to review surveillance footage at the Hard Rock to see if any unwanted touching actually took place? I asked because I was escorted by the Hard Rock staff, right. um, and they said they said they can't do anything about it. It's Avian's um, um, event, and they they call the shots, and so they're just following their orders. And I was told that was that, and I I, I was told I had to leave. That's all they said. So, so let's pause there. Shifting blame, shifting blame. Hard Rock saying, "Oh, it's not us." Avian saying, "Oh." Mm, yeah yeah he's been in the industry for 24 years I just want to repeat that 24 years that's almost a quarter of a century almost a quarter of a damn century all right let's continue so for the record they never reviewed footage to actually see if anything happened no no one okay 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 I even called the next so, day and asked the hard rock you know what's up with that and okay, like, and, well, and, and, okay, and Shawn Michaels was how many feet away from you this time at the ABN Awards? Do you want me to unmute uh, Michael? Do you want one, me? He was standing right in front of me. He was right in front of me. Okay, so we'd say, what, like five five feet at the most? Uh, I wasn't even there, it was about maybe two feet. Two feet. He's standing okay, there. So, we were so, in the yeah. Okay, so, so Shawn was two feet away. There's cameras all over the place. There's ultimate mm -hmm. surveillance in the room. And mm -hmm. how many people would you say are, are around you at that? If you estimated how many people were around at that Well, point? you know, if you're talking about when we were on the red carpet, yeah, we were a few feet away from each other on the red carpet. Because I had, like I said, I had stepped away to do a different, a separate interview. 
And then once I right. saw Tasha, I returned back to the group because I was just kind of like, I need to keep space between me and her. Uh, and then when they approached Sean to say that he had the lead, he was standing right in front of him. Okay. And, and Marcus, explain this. Like, if you if you were accused of falsely bothering someone at the pre-awards party, and then when you saw her, you, you, you seem to have a real nice attitude still. You didn't have any animosity towards her when you saw her the second time. It was just avoid her. That's it. It is what it is. You, you didn't have any animosity. I wasn't. I, listen, I, like I said, 24 years of dealing with people in and right. out of this business, I've, my, my, I'm not as... I'm not. I am well-rounded and and I'm and grounded. I'm not. You know, I've, I'm more than humble when it comes to this industry. I I understand the pitfalls and all the misconceptions. And you know, I'm I'm a performer. I I get approached all the time. So I have to. I have an even killed demeanor. You know, or else the fans are like he's such an asshole. And I'm not. I'm just just this way. I love talking with people. I learn a lot by dealing with people. So. Most of the time, they just want to share a story or give me props or, you know, get a handshake or a picture, and and it and it's over just like that. So there's no need for me to be aggressive. There's no need for me to be angry. There's no need. It's just it's really about just to continue to move forward, and that's what yeah. I wanted to do. Okay, uh, Melissa, do we have uh, Shawn Michaels? Is he called in? Yes, we do. Yes, we in? do. I've already had okay. him in. Uh, uh, okay. Marcus, you can. Uh, we've heard your side of the story. I deem you to be a very credible uh, individual, and I believe you're telling the truth. So um, I want to get to I want to get to Sean Michaels to get his side of the story, if that's okay. Yeah, because we have five minutes no for Sean and five minutes for the witness. Okay, yeah. so we're gonna get on with that. Mark, stand by if you want to still hear on the show, and we're gonna bring Sean Michaels in right now. Yeah, you can just put your phone okay. on there. Thank you, thank you, Marcus. No problem. Thank you, Marcus. Got you, brother. Hey, Sean. Welcome to the show, Sean. Thank you for coming, uh, for calling into Raw Talk. So I'm going to turn it over to Michael now. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hey, Sean. We just we just got done talking with Marcus, and we just want to hear your side of the story on that red carpet event when you guys were uh, accused of uh, uh, unwanted touching of uh, Tasha Rain. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I, I basically heard some of what Marcus's explanation of what happened that evening. Um, evidently, there was, there, I guess, I, I, I at, uh, at, at any, at any given point, I thought we were all together. I didn't know that we were separated or anything of, of that nature. Um, but um, I, again when we were together that evening on the red carpet did not see Mr. Marcus um, touch anyone in an aggressive manner, in an aggressive sexual manner, and in any any type of manner aggressively. Uh, As he mentioned, all of us were were just glad to be there, and um, as we all always are when we're on the red carpet, thankful for the people who come to basically give us acknowledgement and support and uh, as Marcus just said earlier, props. So um, it was uh, very uh, shocking to me to to be approached by hotel security and other seemingly some undercover people as well um, as we were exiting the red carpet that evening. Um, uh, and being accused of touching someone, being also uh, pointed out specifically because of my black gloves, um, that what they were sure it was me. Because of course I asked several times, "Are you guys?" First of all, that was a joke. Right. You know, um, I'm from Brooklyn. We like to joke, but I thought this was a joke, and I turned out it was not a joke. And I'm like, okay. I'm getting a little pissed here, if not very pissed here. So someone needs to go get Peter Warren. I'm going to pause right there. Again, Shawn Michaels and Mr. Marcus look nothing alike, with the exception of them both 
having worn black, all black, that particular evening, and of course, they're, them both having black skin. About my complexion. From my perspective, and again, this is only my opinion, this was a show of force against African American males by a white supremacist group within the adult entertainment industry that I personally believe is linked to the Adult Video News Media Network, AVN. Really, from my perspective, AVN never needs to even tweet the hashtag Black Lives Matter. I feel the same about Tasha Ray. I feel the same in regards specifically, directly, when it comes to Peter Warren. And without a doubt, I feel that way in regards to Peter Warren's buddy known as TRPWL. But let's continue. Um, Peter Warren, Peter Warren, Warren is Peter with Warren. AVN. Yeah, yeah and, and, and he... I basically wanted someone to let these guys know who I was. So, um, you know, because they were like, no, you were, you definitely have to go. You were pointed out. I'm like, no, I don't because I haven't, done, I haven't done anything. So anyway, when Peter came out in the hallway, um, and now there's a crowd gathered. Now it's a basic scene. Um, and um, Peter goes, no, it's, it's not Sean, if I recall correctly. Um, it's Marcus, or something of that nature. And um, they, security looked actually dumbfounded, <laughs> um, which if you would just check your security cameras that are in place for something of this nature, you would probably, would, this probably, this probably wouldn't happen, all right? Um, but that wasn't the case in my opinion because obviously they had the wrong person according to the whole situation of what was um, alleged. And, um, yeah, and, and, and let's pause there. There wasn't a wrong person because nobody did anything wrong at this event. At least not from my perspective. Aside from being born black. Why do you hate black people, Peter Warren? Why? Is it because you've dated women who prefer black men to you? Is it because for years working in the adult entertainment industry, you have realized that quite often black men are more endowed than you? Is it because You're just a bigot, piece of trash. I'm just asking. Let's go ahead and continue. Sean, I want to I want to reiterate. At this time, you are the president of the adult union. At this time. At this time, yes. The accusation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you are the president. You're the standing president of the adult union, and you've been in the industry, let's say, 25, 30 years at this point. 29, 29 and counting. 29 year veteran of the industry, impeccable record. Let's pause, 29 years. And it's important to note that Shawn Michaels, at least from my perspective, felt pressure to step down from that position that he held as the president of the APAG union. Yeah, and it's a shame because nowadays you have guys like Ricky Johnson who um, are making it clear via their Twitter feed that they feel that black talent doesn't have a voice. Ricky, black talent has a voice. It's just that that voice is often suppressed. So that guys like you, Ricky, are under the impression that such voices don't exist, but they exist. You just need to open your ears a little bit. You need to open your damn eyes too. Continue. And president of the adult union and here you are being falsely accused in a crowd full of on, people on, on our night on our on our 
you know, I like to call it our, I like to call it our Kathy Knight because it really is, you know, our night to shine as an industry. Um, and uh, of course, that's not. Uh, and, and, and and when they reinstated you, Sean, and said you could stay, you were just so upset at that point. You you voluntarily just left. Oh, I absolutely, I, I, <laughs> coming from where I come from, I wanted to do more than that, but of course, I, I myself, and <laughs> figured, okay, um, the better, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know you left. Yeah, I, I, was, I, I, I was, I was, I would, and I'm still, still pissed about it, Marcus, because it was completely wrong of them to do that. Uh, they ruined your evening obviously they completely ruined my evening I had people waiting on the inside of course and so did you yeah we guys we have an independent witness a member of the press and I want to bring him on right now do we have that okay. member of the press right now yes we do, do we have him yes we do okay uh, uh, you are a standing member of the press do you have current press credentials sir that is absolutely correct, that is absolutely correct. okay I want you to quickly Surmise, you were on the red carpet, you are a member of the press, you had video, camera footage, you were watching everyone's move, you are an independent witness, not connected with these two individuals. What did you see? All that I saw, I did see Tasha Rain come on the, the, the red carpet, um, and then about 20, 25 minutes later, that's when I saw Mr. Marcus and Shawn Michaels, Julius St. Jacques come on the red carpet, because the red carpet was... At, the red carpet actually is a very slow crawling thing. It takes a while to get up to the point where I was at. Um, but at, after they left, uh, when when I started hearing about this whole thing that Tasha Ring was saying, now I'm standing on the red carpet. There is maybe about 30 other camera crews there. There was also um, CNN, Access Hollywood, Entertainment Tonight, TMZ, because Stormy Daniels was expected to walk the red carpet. So you had all these camera crews there, and where I was standing at was right next to the crew that was recording the entire event for Showtime to broadcast later on this year for, on, on their network. Nobody caught any of this at all, not in the background, not a loud noise, nothing. Yeah, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be? Why today is Karen, oh, I'm sorry, I mean Tasha, tweeting Black Lives Matter? Why? Is she trying to, uh, is she trying to attract someone else to um, reach out and tap her on the shoulder so that she can say that she was assaulted again? Is that what it is? Let's continue. It, it, there is absolutely no way that Tasha Rae could sit there and claim that Mr. Marcus sexually assaulted her on the red carpet when you had at least a hundred different cameras there. No Wait, way. I, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna, I gotta interject. If someone was sexually harassed on the red carpet, wouldn't people intervene? Wouldn't it be a big scene? Wouldn't it be an event that people would capture? Yes. Yes, it would. I mean, e okay. e even on the red, even on the red carpet itself. You, you, uh, first and foremost, you have the AVN security. You have members of AVN, uh, the magazine itself, that are standing there on the red carpet. You have uh, you you had Tasha. Not Ta I'm sorry, not Tasha Ray. Uh, Tanya uh, Tanya State spouse who who works for AVN. He's on the red carpet. Uh, you have uh, uh, I think that's date uh, uh, Mr. Scott Brian Brian. He's on the red carpet, so you have all these all these AVN staffers that are there on the red carpet. Really quick, I have to I have to interject. They signed wait they signed a code of conduct document as well, so don't forget that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, every every good point, Miss Hill. Very good point, Miss Hill. Actually, I'm going to put together a petition shortly after I post this podcast on change.org that I um, urge anyone who views this to sign because Melissa Hill needs to have her show reinstated on LA Talk Radio. Um, at one point in time, I was friendly with Melissa Hill. We no longer speak, but that's besides the point. 
Melissa Hill, from my perspective, may have lost her show because she decided authentically within herself that black lives matter. So um, she needs to have her show back. So let's all, um, I'm going to put a link to the petition when I put it down here and I need everyone to sign it. And um, we're going to have to get that petition over to LA Talk Radio. And we're also going to forward this situation and the petition to some groups that deal with systemic racism in various industries because um, this whole situation wasn't right and they have tried to suppress knowledge of this situation. But let's continue. And just so you all know, this last voice in this um, podcast that we're hearing is the witness of everything that happened reached out to yes, every- uh, other members of the press to see if they had footage. Were you able to find any kind of footage on this event? No. I reached out to other members of the press that were standing to my left and right of me that were taking pictures and videos. None of them have this. I actually spoke... I'm, I'm friends with the woman that was hosting the event for Showtime itself, and she didn't hear anything about this. The, the Showtime cameras didn't take anything of this. So how, how could something happen and all every camera in there didn't hear it didn't see it nothing okay, we're, that's, that's we're, we're, we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we have one 30 seconds to end this and i'm gonna say that the reason why no one has any footage is because it never happened okay never happened never happened never happened at all so that's it for this podcast for those of you who've been wondering what mr marcus has been referring to all this time when it comes to um, some situations that he experienced, this is what it is. This is what it is. And he's not the only one who's encountered tremendous racism linked to the adult entertainment industry. You guys have heard me screaming and hollering about it forever. And you've seen the backlash that I incurred. You've seen the stalking, you've seen the harassment, you've seen my reputation drugged through the mud, you've seen it all. I'm a very strong person. The reason more black talent, more black people in our society do not come forward when it comes to these kinds of things is because they might have a spouse, they might be a parent, they may not have the skills I have to be able to continue on in life. But when I see certain people talking about, talking down on the protesters, calling them all looters. They're not all looters. Saying, oh, you know, um, people need to control themselves because they'll need to be burning down people's businesses. One of those people is Sean TRPWL saying this stuff. Well, you know what? Sean TRPWL metaphorically burned down my business when I was an active talent. Ruined my reputation had me blacklisted. That's no different than him lighting a match and burning down my house. So when he's talking about people burning down businesses, he's talking about himself. I built who Monica Foster was, not the porn industry. And he burnt that to ashes. Now from those ashes rose Alexandra Mayers. But if he thinks for one damn second, I will ever stop talking about the fact that he is a white supremacist, that he is a racist, that he is a bigot, and that AVN condones his behavior, he better think twice. Because I will talk about it until the day he dies. Have a great day, everybody. And thank you once more for watching another podcast of PNT Live here exclusively on the PNT Live Network, founded by yours truly, Alexandra Mayers, formerly known as Monica Foster. Good night.